Does it work? Go. Hello, everybody. I'm Stefan. And let me introduce myself. I don't have slides. I decided to stay in VS Code only. So let's see how this goes. I'm from Berlin, uh, Germany. And I do front-end JavaScript stuff for quite a little bit now. And I work for a company that is called, whoop, that's not great. I work for a company that is called Twilio. So if you want to know how to do um, phone calls, SMS, WhatsApp, um, video, emails, and all these kind of things via scripting and programming, you can check that out. And the thing that I want to show you actually is, is this. For two years now, I do something that is called Today I Learned. Um, if you're following Twitter, you will see a lot of people that just share what they learned. And they are not scared about um, being recognized as being not a senior developer or not an experienced developer. So what I want to show you is basically this. This is my private website. I'm doing this now for two years, right? And every time when I sit in front of my computer and I'm like, huh, I didn't know that, then I put it on my website. So and sometimes it's notes like this, which is literally takes me two minutes, but I put it on my website and then share it and tweet it, and sometimes people are like, huh, Stefan, thanks for sharing. That's super cool. So what I want to do in the next eight minutes is I want to share just 10 random things that I learned in JavaScript and that I put on my website, and I will paste it in, into VS Code. So what I want to do is, so you see here main function, and then I'm using console log, and you see the NDC Oslo there is the result of the function, okay? So let's talk about JSON stringify. So JSON stringify is a function that serializes your object to a string. This, first of all, has more operators, um, so you can um, define a replacer function and a indentation if you want to. But what I actually learned two weeks ago is that if you have an object that has a function to JSON, you can totally mess that up. So JSON stringify will not stringify your object anymore, but will uh, return and serialize what you have in there. This is useful when you want to get uh, rid of sensitive information or things like this. So let's go on. String comparison is another thing, right? When you compare these two strings, well, you could now do something like to lowercase here um, to figure out if it's the same uh, sequence of characters. But how do you do this, buddy, here? Right? That is a tricky one. You could now go into all the code points and maybe figure these things out. But what turns out is that when you're dealing in JavaScript, what you can do is there's a function that is called local compare, and that accepts a few parameters. But what you can do is here that this little function is a very kind helper if you want to compare um, super fancy characters like this, like this. I mean, we're in Norway. We also have this cross O, right? Um, so you can use this, and it will tell you if the base of the character sequence is the same. I think that can be very handy. This is a very slow function, though, so we have to be careful with this one. So let's take talk about another one. So for example, I'm German, and we have these characters. And you can uh, represent these characters in two ways. You can also do it with two code points. So as you see, this is represented in the same thing, but it is actually not the same thing. So when you go to, and when you log out the lengths of these, word length and uh, like word length, you will see that, well, one has one code point more. What you can do in JavaScript is there's a function that is called normalize, which fixes this behavior, which is actually really cool, because this way you can um, uh, guarantee that your validation passes. So and now we're talking about arrays already. Let's have a look at array.from. So array.from accepts any argument and tries to arrayify it, right? So what you see there is, the string that is split into arrays, so what we can do now is we can write a map function, and we can map all the characters, and maybe use my, fam wait, my favorite emoji, which is this one. Oh, no, which is this one. So that's pretty cool, but three weeks ago or something, I learned that array.from actually has a second argument, so you can do this in one one which is pretty sweet, and you can save some lines with this. So and let's talk about our favorite example, is not a number, right? So we've got this global function in JavaScript, is not a number, which basically does not tell you if something is this data type is not a number, but only if something would be parsed to not a number. So what you see here is that is not a number returns true for all these three, um, but not this one. So and if I want to figure out if actually not a number is something, what we did for years is my is not a number is wrote our own function to figure out if something is actually the data type, not a number. So this would now return a not equals a, 
because not a number is not equal to itself. We're speaking JavaScript. So that is cool. So you could do this now. And now you could figure out if it's really e not a number. But it turns out, just because we're dealing JavaScript, there's another not is a num. So it's this one. And this is actually doing what we are supposed to do, right? So when you're dealing with is none, be aware that the global is none is not equal number is none. Good luck with this one. <laughs> so let's talk about index of. So when you want to figure out if something is in an array, what we did for years is we used index of. And then if it's a, a minus 1, right, then we know that a value is not in the array. So what we can now do is we can change this to 1, 2, 3, for example, or to something like this, right? But how can we now figure out if not a number is in there, right? That's actually a tricky one, because not a number is not equal to itself. So the comparison doesn't work. So for a while now, we have area that in includes in JavaScript, which actually makes that possible, which is super cool. So index of is not the same comparison as array.includes. So maybe this will hit you at some point. This is a very tricky one to spot. So let's talk about function parameters. So what we have here is a function inside of another function. And did you know that you can call length on functions? So what you see now is that this shows the arguments that are available in the function, which is pretty sweet. right? This can be uh, helpful when you're maybe writing library. But what if we do something like this, which is a REST operator in JavaScript? Well, this is completely messing it up, right? It's not telling you anything anymore. What? So something is wrong. It's not telling you anything anymore, which might be OK, right? Because args takes all the REST arguments in this whole thing. But this got me thinking again, what about default parameters? Nope, not going into this. So when you use function.length, be careful because there's a lot of tricky thing in there. And I'm also secretly in love with regular expressions. Go on. Dot. Whoop. My auto completion doesn't work anymore. Here we go. So what you see is a regular expression for three characters. Actually, it's an A, it's a period, which is every character, right? and a C. So I can now go in here, I can change things, and it will stay true, which is really nice. But actually, the period in JavaScript regular expression is not matching every character. Let's take a line break in there. Damn it. So what we can do is we can use the dot all flag, which finally fixes this behavior. So dot all flag fixes this. Cool. So you have to be aware of when you do regular expression on big JavaScript strings. So speaking about regular expressions. Let's go on here. And this actually surprised me, because not many people are using this. So I have a, a regular expression with a group that checks for Jane or John, then anything in between, right? And another string with, which, is, ooh, which is Smith or Smuth. This means now when I have something here in the middle, something like whatever, and I use string.match, I have the matching string here. I have the first group, the group I'm not interested in, and the second group. Right? So what I did for years in J JavaScript with arrays is then I pick index 1 and I pick index 3. And index 2 is just hanging there for nothing. It turns out there are also non-capturing groups, which help me to get rid of this. I don't know why people are not using this, but this can be very, very handy. And then finally, let's talk about finally, which is always a weird thing to me that this behaves like this. So we have your function with a try-catch statement, and this returns something. What happens when I now bring a f in a finally? Now we all wait, uh, write async and await, so we write more um, dry catches. And let's return something here. I'm the boss. So this now overwrites the first return statement, which surprised me initially. What is going on here? So but let's play around a little bit. Let's throw an error here. Boo. It's still finally. And what if we throw an error here? Still, finally, it turns out when you're using finally, finally is always right, which is a bummer. So over the years of two years, I made it to 83 documented learnings like this covering JavaScript, CSS, HTML, accessibility, whatever, you, whatever I come across. And what I really want to tell you is that this is a lot of fun. And what 
I would like to, you to do is just do the same because it doesn't take much time, especially when you're a developer, you feel like you're stuck and you're not progressing and everything is new and all the people know so much stuff. When you have this list on your website or even on your computer, it's super cool. And sometimes I'm just tweaking this out and a few people are like, Stefan, this is so amazing. You made my day and this makes my day, right? So, and, ah, oh, caps lock, come on. And this is what I uh, had to say. I'm Stefan, and we're sponsoring downstairs, so if you want to say hi, say hi. <laughs>